the, the entire structure that the reproductive tract was developed from, that is what we call the Mullerian duct. But actually, during in, intrauterine life, it is just like a tube. But then as the, the development goes on, then it will start to branch where it will start to form the vagina, the cervix, the uterus, fallopian tubes, and ovaries. And that is what we call the Mullerian duct. Please, I hope it's clear. And that is what we are going to study. Then apart from that, we will talk about the accessory organs of reproduction. The accessory organs of reproduction. That is the, the breast. The breast is one of the accessory uh, organs of female reproductive system. Then we'll talk about that one. Okay. Please, can you hear me? If you can't hear me, you, are, you draw my attention, please. You can't hear me, madam. Ah. <laughs> can you can't hear me. We can hear you. We can hear you. Nobody says she can't hear me, but I'm talking at the top of my voice, so. Sister, we can hear you, but you can't see your face. Mm -hmm. We don't want any distractions from the class. Please check your networks. You mm. are oh. very loud and clear. Can I can I continue? Yes, sister. Yes, sister. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, please, let me find out from you. Before we talk, we continue mm -hmm. with the vagina and other things. Did I talk mm -hmm. about the pelvic floor muscle with you? Because I want to finish with the pelvis before we talk about the structures that are situated inside the pelvis. Because the classes no, are sister. many. Please. No, we didn't talk about the pelvic floor muscles. No, no, sister. Oh, okay. No, then sister. please, pardon me. Then we leave the vagina aside and then finish with the heavy floor muzzle before we enter the pelvis. So, let me be fine with you. Yes, sister. Okay. We're all so the pelvic floor easy. muzzles. Please, can I get somebody? Let's have one person at least mentioning the or describing the pelvic floor muzzle. Just one Hello. person, please. When you want to say something, just raise your hand. We we'll point. We ask you to go ahead. Other than that, people, many people will be talking at the same time, and that is not healthy enough for teaching. Everybody, please. Please, somebody to describe the pelvic floor muscles. Is the superficial that you can talk about? Just talk about it. If it is a deep pelvic yeah, floor, you can still start from there. But I'll be very happy if somebody can quickly tell us. I just want to know your previous knowledge on the pelvic floor muscles. So somebody should quickly tell us. Yeah. Uh, it is Abiba. No. Oh. This many people. Please, I want one person to just talk about the pelvic floor muscle. I want to know your previous knowledge, and then I will build on that. And that is how teaching should be. So, one person, somebody should talk about the pelvic floor muzzle, please. Don't you don't have an idea. You all have an idea about pelvic floor muzzle. Hello. Please, the pelvic floor muscles are located between the tailbone, that is yeah. the pulses, and the pubic bone within the pelvis. They support the uh, bowel and bladder uh, movement. Hello. Sister, please control your children and control the class as well. You are disturbing a lot. 
The waiting room, so that you go there and finish the lectures. The pelvic floor Please go muscle. ahead. The one okay, describing sir. the pelvic floor muscle. Go ahead. The no. pelvic floor muscles, uh, they are located between uh, the tail bone the and, the pelvis, and the pubic bone within the pelvis. And also, they support the bowel and the bladder, as well as the vagina and the uterus. Thank Good. you. Thank you very much. Alice, it tells me that you have an idea about whatever we are going to do. Okay. I hope you can hear me. Can I continue? I want to take up the description of the superficial pelvic floor muscle. Can I continue? Yes, okay. yes So the pelvis, the pelvis itself that we described, it is shaped like a gutter. It is a gutter-shaped structure where its anterior wall is shorter than the posterior wall. And, and the, the pelvis is filled with muscles. It is the muscles that helps to contain, for the pelvis to contain the, the structures or the organs that are situated within the pelvis. And so what actually happens is that the muscles are in two folds. We have the superficial pelvic floor muscles and then the deep pelvic floor muscles. The superficial pelvic floor muscles are made up of what we call the ischiocarbonosis. I will take my time and explain them to you to understand. The ischiocarbonosis, the bulbocarbonosis, the transverse perineum, they are all in pairs. Then we have what we call triangular ligaments. Triangular ligaments. They fill the spaces that are left uncovered in the pelvis. I mean the triangular ligaments. And the muscles that are mentioning, that is the ischiocarbonosus, the bulbocarbonosus, and then the transverse perineum are the pairs of muscles that fill the outside of the pelvic floor. They cover the outside, I mean the superficial, and the name superficial pelvic floor muscles. So we are, and there's something we call the anacosigia raffi. That also has something to do with the anal region, and certainly the anal region or the rectum, just to make sure that the pelvic muscles are well fixed and are attached to the deep pelvic floor muscles. Please, I'm going to take them one by one. Okay. So let's continue. Now, talking about the superficial muscles, let's start from the ischiocarbonosis. The ischiocarbonosus are two pairs of muscles that originate, it starts from the ischia tuberosity and then it passes obliquely. It passes obliquely. Please, can you hear me? Am I yes, heard? Sister. Yes, yes, sister. sister. Okay. It yes, passes, thank you. It passes obliquely and then I can't see your screen. You can't do what? I can't see your screen. You can't see my screen. Yeah. Or you can't hear me. Yes, I can't see the screen. I can't hear. Recording in progress. Can I continue? Yes, yes, please. So I'm saying that 
the ischial cavernosus mm -hmm. passes from the they originate from the ischia tuberosities. We, we if you remember, we said the ischial tuberosities are the thickened portion of the ilium upon which the body rests when we are in the sitting up position. So that is where this iliocosidia il, ilio. This is where the ischial cavernosus muscle originates from. Then it passes obliquely upwards and gains insertion into the cavernosa tissue of the clitoris. Please take note of where they are originating from and where they are gaining their insertion. Any question on that? Please, do you have any question on that? Mister, please, we can look the Please, you said it gaining in session. You, you want to see my screen? Yes, sister. Yes, yes please. Yes, okay. sister. I, I don't have much on this. What I'm saying, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I haven't put anything on the screen. But mm. if you want, please, when I finish, I can send you the whole notes. And I want to see you talking. Uh -uh. <laughs> right, yeah. hey, why are you 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 are the the what do you call it from Mr. Yusuf point of view. So if you are talking about not seeing me and not seeing me, if you can hear me, I this is you have to speak. But I'm 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 trying. Please, who is recording it for me? That's it's all. recording not in progress. It's recording not in progress. It's in Are progress. you not getting the recording? It's in progress. It's in progress. Recording. Yeah. Please let me continue because you have a lot to learn. Other than that, next week we are going to have small quiz. You can't answer the questions. Allow me to teach you, please. If you don't understand something, fine. You can tell me so that uh, uh, I, will, I will take my time to explain it to you. Other than that, let's not waste time, please. So that is the ischial cavernosus. And I, I'm saying that once it originates from the ischial tuberosities, it then passes upwards obliquely and gains insertion into the cavernosa tissue of the clitoris. That's what I said. Now let's see, let's talk about the bulbal cavernosus. The bulbal cavernosus. The bulbal cavernosus, it originates from the central point of the perineum. And then it moves upwards. It moves upwards. As it moves upwards, it encircles the vaginal orifice, constricting it. Then on reaching, as it moves up, on reaching the, the urethra orifice, it makes a U-turn to encircle it. So that when you get the desire to maturate, it is this muscle that is going to help you to constrict your urethra sphincter so that you don't mess up yourself. You don't urinate onto yourself until you get an appropriate position or place before you allow urine to come out. Now, after encircling the urethra orifice, after encircling the urethra orifice, it then moves up and gains in section into the cavernosa tissue of the clitoris. And mind you, it is this structure, this cavernosa tissue, that helps the clitoris to hey, engorge when you are sexually aroused. When you are sexually sensitized. It is these muscles that cause the, the, uh, the clitoris to erect. If you remember, when we're talking about the vulva, I said it is made up of an erector tissue, if you remember. It is these muscles that help. I've never to be a Hey. Andy Watcher. Matilda Bingy. Matilda Bingy. Ah. 
What is the what meaning is of that? this? Ah. Oh, it's too bad. Okay. So let's move on. Okay. Mr. Please, I have a question. Yeah, ask me, madam. Mr. Please, the description, are you referring to the pubic cavernosis or the pubic? I said, I didn't say pubic cavernosis. There's nothing like pubic cavernosis. It is bulbo. There's nothing like pubic cavernosis. I said bulbo. I will mention the names again. Please, I said, I said it extends from the I perineum. Said with the muscles, I'm with the muscles. I mentioned it's cavernosus, and I explained to you where it originates from and where it is insected. Then I mentioned bulbo cavernosus. I said it starts from the center point of the perineum, then it moves upwards. As it moves upwards. It encircles the vagina orifice. Then it goes up about 2.5 centimeters above the vagina orifice. That is where you can locate the urethra orifice. And so on reaching the urethra orifice, it makes a U loop. loop. Then it enters. Uh, then it enters the carbonosa tissue of the clitoris. Mm -hmm. That is what I said, and that's where I have ended. So I'm picking the structures that form or that constitute the formation of the pelvic floor, uh, superficial pelvic floor muscles. I'm picking them one by one so that we describe them. And I said it constituted by or it is formed, the superficial pelvic floor muscles. I'm repeating it because those of you who keep on saying, I didn't hear, I didn't get. That's why it's like I'm moving forward, then I come back for people, for everybody to understand what I'm teaching. Okay, so I mentioned the structures as the bulbo cavernosus. Then, uh, ischio cavernosus. I'm now on the transverse perineal muscle. Transverse perineal muscles. This muscles also get, originates. It comes from the ischio It also starts from the please leave it. It also starts from the ischia tuberosity where the ischio cavernosus started from. It is that same point that the transverse perineum also originate from. But this time around, this one, it passes medially. That is centrally, transversely. Then it will come and meet its fellow. It's like there are two pairs. One is coming from right ischial, uh, ischial tuberosity, and the other is coming from the left ischial tuberosity. Then they are coming medially. They will meet at the center of the perineum where the bulbo cavernosus have taken off. That is where the transverse perineal muscles will insert. Please, any question? Please, do you have any question for me? Yes, please, ma. Take the okay. transverse perineal again. Okay. I Thank you. I said the transverse perineal muscles, they originate one on either side of the ischia to porosity. Then it passes medially or centrally to meet each other at a point known as the central point of the perineum. That is the transverse perineal muscles. Please, is that okay? Yes, please, is that you. okay? Okay. Yes, please. Okay. But one thing that as a midwife you should know is that the transverse perineal muscle consists of both superficial muscles and the deep heavy floor muscles. So sometimes in objectives they may ask you which of the following muscles will be injured or will be will be uh, damaged or will be uh, incised during a You should know that once the 
transverse perineum is involved. It involves both superficial and then uh, deep pelvic floor muscles. Please take note of that. <laughs> okay, so that is it. Now, the external sphincter of the anus also forms parts of the superficial pelvic floor muscles. Please take note of that. The external sphincter of the anus, the anal sphincter muscles, it is part of the superficial pelvic floor muscles. They also lie below the internal sphincter any. There's a muscle we call the internal sphincter any. And then they live on top of the levator any muscles. The levator any muscles, we all know it to be the deep pelvic floor muscles. But the external anal sphincter or the external sphincter of the anus is also situated or lies on top it lies on top of the levator any muscles or the deep pelvic floor muscles it consists of muscle fibers that begins anteriorly from the central point of the perineum and then it will move backwards to form circular fibers which surrounds the anus. Please take note of this. It's very important because if you have this at the back of your mind, when you're conducting delivery, you will know when to extend the head. You wouldn't allow the baby's head to come just like that, but then you know when to extend the head so that the face of the baby will pass over, pass over the perineum. So I'm taking the external anal sphincter or the external sphincter of the anus again. Please pay attention. It is not only for anatomy, anatomy description sake that we are learning this thing, but we have to link it to delivery. We have to link it to midwifery. So that is it. So I'm saying that the external anal sphincter or the external sphincter of the anus that it lies below the internal sphincter any muscles and then on top of the levator any muscles. And that it also consists of muscle fibers, which begins anteriorly from the center point of the perineum. So just picture it, that. It starts from the center point of the perineum and then it will move backwards. It moves backwards to form circular muscle fibers around the anus or the anal region. Any question? It has outer basal fibers, which also moves backwards to be attached to the tip of the coccyx. So you see the importance, the role that the coccyx also play when it comes to this description. It has its own outer muscle that moves backwards. And then as it goes backwards, it then gain in section or attachment to the tip of the coccyx. Please, any question before I continue with the membranous center of the urethra? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hi. 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 Are we together? Do you have any yes. questions? Yes. Okay. Can I continue? Yes, I uh, yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, then let's quickly move on to the, the membranous sphincter of the urethra. It is part of the superficial pelvic floor muscles. It is part of the superficial pelvic floor muscles. So the membranous sphincter of the urethra, I'm saying that the fibers of this sphincter or the fibers of these muscles, they also arise from the pubic bone. I'm talking about the membranous sphincter of the urethra. The fibers arise from the pubic bone. Then it passes above and below the urethra. Take note of that. The membranous sphincter of the urethra, the muscles, I'm saying, it passes above and below the urethra to the opposite pubic bone. We all know where the pubic bone is. And so we are saying that the membranous sphincter of the urethra, the muscles, start from above and below the urethra, and then it passes to the opposite pubic bone. They do not completely encircle the 
the urethra partially. They do not completely encircle the urethra, but their contraction helps to close the lumen of the urethra. And then it helps to form the external urethra sphincter. Please, I'm going over it so that I, as I keep on saying, it is not only for anatomical uh, description sake, but then it is also for its application in midwifery or in labor or in delivery. So I'm saying that the membrane center of the urethra it actually originates from one pubic bone. Then it passes above and then below the urethra to the opposite pubic bone. So look at it. They do not completely encircle the urethra, but then they are contracting. That is, when the membranous sphincter of the urethra contracts, it helps to close the lumen of the urethra, right? And it also fall, helps to form the external urethra sphincter. Imagine when you wake up in the morning, especially when you are in the compound uh, uh, house or you are in the hostel. Even if it's not in the compound, we are in a compound house. If you are not in the compound house, what happens is that you get up in the morning, your bladder is full, you want to get rest to the washroom to go and empty. You push the door and then somebody pushes the door from behind, meaning somebody is using the washroom. What happens at that time? If you don't take care, it's like the, the way of walking will even change. I'm talking about the females. <laughs> yes, it alters, it alters the way you walk. It's like we are constricting your external urethra sphincter so that urine will not dribble on your thighs. It is this sphincters, these muscles that is helping you to do that. And that is that explains why when it becomes weak, when it is weak following succession of childbed, when you get the desire to urinate, if you don't speed up, you see urine will be dribbling all along on your thighs. So that is the external sphincter of the urethra. So that please, in objectives, if you should see something like which of the following muscle cells in constriction, the urethra orifice when the bladder is full. And then we bring about internal sphincter, external sphincter, any muscle and whatever muscle. You should know that it is the external sphincter of the urethra. This muscles is helping you to control urine when you haven't gotten a, a specified place to urinate. Any question, please? Any question? Please, another name for the external sphincter of the anus is called the Enocosidia raffi or enocosidia tail. I'm saying the external sphincter of the urethra or the external sphincter of the anus. Please, uh, external sphincter of the anus. Please, I'm talking about the external center of the urethra. That is what I'm talking about. That's what I'm describing right now. And I'm saying that, yes, I said that it, it originates from the pubic bone. I think I've already said that. But remember that it doesn't encircle the urethra completely. Okay. Let's talk about the external center of the anus. I'm done with the external sphincter of the urethra. If you don't have any question for me, let me move straight away to the external sphincter of the anus, the ana or the ana sphincter. Can I go ahead? Yes, sister. Okay. So the external sphincter of the anus or the ana sphincter. <laughs> Come again. Hadia, please, uh, the yes. other name for the external center of the urethra. Please, tell me. the other name for the external center of the urethra. Please, what's the other name? Hello. Hello. I can hear Hello. you. Right. Yeah, please, uh, I please, found uh, the other name for the external center of the urethra. I didn't get that one. Please, the external center of the urethra. That is also called something, but I didn't get it. Uh, no, please, that one is the 
uh, I'm talking about the external sphincter of the anus. That is the one of oh, the that has another name called the anal procedure raffi. Okay. The external sphincter Thank of the you. anus. That is what is called okay. the uh, the anal procedure raffi or the anal procedure team. Okay. So okay. the the external okay. sphincter of the anus, we are saying that it lies below the internal sphincter and the, and then the levator and the muscles. It consists of muscle fibers which begins anteriorly and the central point of the perineum. It has outer muscles, which also move backwards and are tied to the tip of the coccyx. I said it. Then I said it has another name called the anocosidia raffi or the anocosidia tail. Okay. Can I move on to the Triangular ligament because it's on a pattern like a triangle. The superficial muscles it forms a pattern like a triangle. Wherever there's a triangle, you know it has an apex and it has a base. But this triangle, because of the ischial procedures going in an oblique manner. And then the transverse perineum coming from that same direction to the center point of perineum. And remember, the center point of perineum marks the beginning of the bubocavenosus. It leaves some triangular space. It leaves some triangular spaces. That has to be filled. And that is what we call the triangular ligaments, filling this triangular space. I don't know whether you have gotten it. Aja, please I've, come I've again. described how the triangle is created. And when the triangle is created, there are triangular spaces that is left uncovered. And that place has to be filled by triangular ligaments. Please, does it make sense to you? No. No. Not yet, ma. No. You don't no. get it. Yes. Oh, you don't. Sister, please you know, come again. Yes. Aja, Aja, please. Please, so, please come again with a triangle. Okay. The triangular ligaments I'm talking about, and I'm trying to. Aja, please, uh, I need handout. You. I write the names and then I said, contact Madame Rachel. Rachel, I know. She had them. They are there. They are with her. They are not with me. They are with her, and all these things are there. Ah, uh, in the diagram, they are there. The diagrams are they are there. They are all there in the handout. So please let your course rep contact her. She said they are ready. It's left with you to uh, make the payments and then take them. They are with her, please. But please, I if I say something that you don't understand, just tell me. I'll take my time and explain it to your understanding, please. I'm talking about triangular ligaments. And as I described the deep, uh, the superficial pelvic floor muscles, I said it is triangular in shape. And so with the bulbo cavernosus in the middle, and then ischial cavernosus at the side, there's a triangular space that is left to be filled with ligaments. And that is what we call the triangular ligaments. Filling the triangular space that is created. I think this one is is well explained enough. Can I continue well, with the yes, description of the triangular yes, ligament? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you Hello, very much. Sister. Okay, okay. Hello, so the triangular ligaments. We are saying that it is it is a, a, a structure that is also referred to as the inferior fossa of the urogenital diaphragm. The triangular ligament, I'm saying that it's other name, or it is also referred to as inferior fascia sure, of the urogenital diaphragm. Thank inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm. Yeah. It fills the triangular space. I'd already explained it. I say it fills the triangular space between the bulbo and ischiocarbonosus and transverse perineum. 
Hello, sister. Remember that it is. I think it's Hello. clear. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hello. I this can hear you. Go ahead. From the diagram on the on your screen, you when you look at it, you see the bubo cavernosa that is encircling uh, from the pubio, from encircling uh, the the clitoris over there. And then the mm -hmm. ischio cavernosa is lying side by side. So please, where does the Good. space form for this transverse ligament to be occupied? To fail. Because there uh -huh. is the is the ischio. Uh -huh. uh, I, I get your point. Is the ischio cavernosa that has formed the triangle, but the pupil is inside the triangle. So is it uh, beneath the superficial transverse perineum that this uh, exactly. ligament will be attached? To? Uh huh. Exactly, exactly that, exactly that. So the transverse perineum, uh, uh, okay, comes transversely from the from the ischia to brosity, like I just explained to you. So this small space that is created is what we call the triangular uh, space, and it is filled with the triangular ligaments. It is filled with the triangular ligaments. I'm happy you have gotten the, the, the picture. This is a, an internal structure. This is an internal structure. So just picture, just picture the, the bubble cavernosus in the center moving upwards. In the center and it's moving upwards. Then the transverse is also coming from the sides. Then from that same spot where the transverse perineum is coming from, then another muscle, the ischial cavernosus, is also right going right up. Right up. Right up. Uh, right it's moving right up. Right up. in a specific manner. So so the first thing is that it's created there. Stay in the middle. Dr. Smensa, what do you want us to do for you? That we are talking. Dr. Smensa. Do you want to go into the waiting room? Other than that, keep quiet and let's continue. So, so that is the triangular space that is left, that small space that is left there. We are saying that triangular ligament will fill it. And I'm telling you that the triangular ligament is also referred to as the, uh, the urogenital diaphragm. And I'm saying that it fills the triangular space that is found between the bulbo, ischial cavernosus, and the transverse perineum. I think this one is straightforward. Then the membranous center of the urethra lies between these layers. The membranous sphincter of the urethra lies between these layers. Please take note of it. That the membranous sphincter of the urethra lies between this triangular ligament. Please take note of that. Then the transverse perineum muscle also lies within this layer. Sister, please, Hello. can you show I will hope that you will get it well. Okay. Please let me uh, let him then pause and call uh, the ICT man because he has muted my video over there and that is why it is not showing. So wait and let me call him. Hello, honorable Mr. Yusuf. Please, can you unmute my video so that the students can see? Because they want to see the diagram. So if you can please unmute my video from your end there, because I'm trying it on my phone and it's not going. Right now, I'm still from the house. Please, can you do that for me? So that they can clearly see the picture that I'm talking about. When you're ready, let me know, please. But I'm continuing with my teaching. Anytime that you make it available, I'll just show you to them. Hmm? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Hello. 
Halo aja. Halo. 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 The audio, uh, the video. Yeah. Okay. We are with Hello. you. I have a question. Hey, yeah, we are with you. Yo, yo, ask me. Yo, thank you very much, dear. Okay, somebody says she has a question. Yes, please. Please, I want to clarify something. The membrane okay. sphincter of the urethra, is it the same as the external sphincter of the urethra? Of the urethra, yes. It's the same, okay. madam. Okay. It's the thank same. You. It's the same, okay. yeah. It's the same. So the triangular ligament, I'm trying to show you its position. Well, I said it fills the triangular space. I think that one is clear. Then the membranous space of the urethra, we are saying that it lies between this membranous, uh, uh, this triangular ligaments. Then the transverse perineal muscle also lies within this triangular ligament. The transverse perineal muscles, they also lie within the layers of this triangular ligament. Then the vagina and the urethral orifice passes through. It passes through it, and they are supported by the triangular ligaments. I'm saying that the vagina and then the urethra or orifice they pass through this triangular ligament, and so the tri this triangular ligament supports the urethra and the vagina orifice. Any question? Can I move on, please? Can I continue? Yes, sister. Yes, yes sister. Okay. Okay. Yes. okay. Okay. So we'll talk about the deep pelvic floor muscles. The deep pelvic floor muscles. The deep pelvic floor muscles. The deep pelvic floor muscles, my phone. So my breath is disturbing me on my phone. Okay. The deep pelvic floor muscles, they are also, what is the other name for the deep pelvic floor muscle? Please, one person to say it. La vita Any muscles. The levator any muscles. Yes. They are called the levator any muscles. And they are also called, what is the other name? The cosigia muscles. The muscles. muscles. Thank you very much. The cosigia muscles. Yeah. They are a pair of strong muscles. And they lie one on either side of the pelvis. They are a pair of very strong muscles lying one on either side of the pelvis. They measure about 3.5 centimeters in thickness. So you can imagine. Had it not been this deep pelvic floor muscles, you would have been even lighter when you are walking. So, but the muscles look at the, 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 the length, I mean the thickness, 3.5 centimeters in thickness. So they are very thick. They yes. arise from the circumference of the true pelvis. I'm talking about the deep pelvic floor muscles. I'm saying that the appearance of muscles, very strong pairs of muscles, that lies on one on either side of the pelvis. And the measurement is about 3.5 centimeters in thickness. They arise from one on either side of the circumference of the true pelvis. Then it swims downwards towards the midline. I think we are getting the picture. They will then sweep downwards towards the midline to be inserted into the end part of the sacrum, the coccyx, and then the upper part of the perineal body. Please take note of it. I remember one of you said that uh, she didn't understand the pelvic floor muscles at all when she was, you, she was doing the, uh, the diploma midwifery. I said, okay, we will get to understand this. And this is the time. This is the time. So please get the picture well. And the, even if I'm holding the pelvis with the muscles, because of the way they are positioned, you may not be able to see inside. So it's just like entering the vagina without seeing anything. Yet you can come out with a meaningful findings. True or false? Hello. True. 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 True.
Do you open up the vagina, open up the pelvis, open up whatever before you can come out with uh, 3 CCM or 4 CL CCM? No, but you can imagine and enter and come out with a very meaningful findings. And that is what I'm saying. That the deep heavy floor muscle, because they are secreted within the pelvis, you may not necessarily see it, but you can feel and you can imagine how it fills the pelvis. So that is what we are describing. I said they arise from the circumference of the true pelvis. Then it will sweep downwards towards the midline to be inserted to the, into the, the lower end of the sacrum. Please take note of that. It will be inserted into the lower end of the sacrum, the coccyx, that is the tip of the coccyx, and then the upper part of the body of the perineum. So then it tells you that the perineum, when we start talking about the perineal body, you will know that the perineal body is made up of both superficial and deep peripheral muscles, as we are seeing right now. The levator and the muscles consist of three pairs of muscles. And they all originate from either side of the bone that form the innominate bone. And that is why, that explains why we studied the pelvis before now talking about the, the uh, muscles that are attached to it. So I'm saying that the levator and the muscles is made up of three parts, or it constitutes three portions, or three pairs of muscles. They all originate from either side of the bones that form the innominate bones. And what are the bones that form the innominate bones? One person, the gentleman among you, your name, please, what are the bones that form the innominate bones? Opoku Prisla, yes. Please go ahead. Um, please, we have the. Please, please go ahead. Hello. Hello. I can hear you. Everybody can hear you. Go ahead. We have the ilium, ischium, and then the pubis. Can you raise your voice a little bit? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. I said we have the ilium. The ischium and then the pubis. Good. So with these three bones, that is where the the deep heavy floor muscles are going to be originated from, as their name implies. The iliocosidios, the ischiocosidios, and then the pubocosidios, and then the pubocosidios. So let's see how and where they will originate from. The most important among the three pairs of heavy floor muscles. We are going to look at it today. And then we link it to midwifery. When I say linking it to midwifery, it means linking it to labor so that we'll be able to prevent and protect these muscles from sagging or damaging after delivery. Okay. So let's start from the pubocosidios. So the muscles we are saying are named according to the type, the part of the indominate bone that it is originating from. After all, wherever it will originate from, it will be it will be insected into it will be insected into the coccyx. I hope that is clear. So the pubocosidios. The pubic procedures originate from the posterior surface of the pubic bone. Please take note of that. The pubic procedures, it originates from the posterior aspect of the pubic bone. Then it will pass between the urethra. Look at that. It will then pass between the urethra, then the lower third of the vagina, and then the perineal body. Enter and the endocos. Talking about the pubic procedures, please note that the pubic procedures is the most important muscles of the pelvic floor. Take note of that. 
that the pubic core seizures, it is the most important pelvic floor muscle. Why is it important? It is important because as the, in the posterior okay, of the pubic bone. Did you say you can't hear me? Yeah, yeah. No, you can't. You can't hear me? Yes. Yes, oh. Aja, please, we can't what hear What is happening that you can't yes, hear me? Yes, please. The line was breaking. The network, eh? Yes, the line was breaking. The line was breaking, was breaking off. Yes, it's mm -hmm. clear now. Okay. It's now clear. Okay, then let me go over it. Then let me go over it. Uh, please, I'm talking about the pubic procedures. Hello? Yes, sister. Go on. Aja, please carry on. Okay. I'm saying that the pubic procedures muscle, it is the most important muscles of the pelvic floor muscles that it originates from the posterior wall of the pubic bone. Yes. Then it passes backwards between the urethral orifice. It goes downwards and then it will get in section into the, into <laughs> the coccyx. But remember, this is what happens. As the muscles are passing backwards, it forms three distinct bands. It forms three distinct bands. And then one on either side of the vagina wall. The three distinct bands, that is the lateral ones, will pass along the vagina wall. But the central band, the central band, that is the third one, we have two on either side and one in the middle. That is the central band. The central band will then pass backwards. And then it will ensure that it will encircle the urethra. It goes downwards. Then it encircles the vagina orifice. Then it joins the other two on the either side before it gain insertion into the coccyx. Abigail Anoche, did you hear what I said? Can you go over it for me? Abigail Anoche, don't run away. Just try what you heard. Yes, anybody. We mention your name and then you run away. <laughs> Abigail Anoche Yaboa. I said, tell me what you heard about the pubic procedures. Just tell us what you what you heard. <laughs> Oh. Yes, go ahead. This apart from Abigail, who is not ready to say anything, who had something? There's a saying that he who teaches learns. So whatever you Sister. say, please, can you go ahead? Yes, my dear. Sister, please, with the pubic coccygeus, he said um, it's, it's formed from the posterior aspects of the pubic. <laughs> And it passes through the urethra at the lower part into the coccyx to form a three distinctive band. So mm -hmm. the, with the two distinctive band, laterally two liners, two passes the vagina and centrally, mm -hmm. the one that passes through the centrally passes back to encircle the urethra. This, that's why I... Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. That is exactly what I said. And you also said it is the most important of the oh, very good. Model. I said most important muscle of the pelvic floor. I said it is the most important muscles of the pelvic floor. Take note of that. So that you, think you were about to explain the reason why it's the most important muscle of the pelvic floor, but you didn't say that part. Uh, the, the reason why it is important it is the most <coughs> important pelvic floor muscle is that because of the role that it plays by encircling the the urethra orifice and then the pubic, how do you call it, the vagina orifice before gaining insection. If it becomes loose, 
if it loses its electricity, elasticity, what happens is that it will cause some of the uh, pelvic organs, especially the uterus, also to prolapse. So that is why it is very important among all the three pairs of pelvic floor muscles. It has a very vital role to play. Apart from that, when it becomes loose, you will see that urine will be dribbling without the consent of the individual woman as a result of prolonged labor. That makes it so important. Apart from that, because of the way it encircles the, the rectum, if it becomes loose after Hello. delivery, the individual yes. woman Go back to may, apart from the fact that she may end up with fistula, she may end up having feces that is not yes. controlled. She may be having physics, she may be passing physics without her concern. And so the pubic procedures muscle is one of the most important muscles of the pelvic floor muscles. That is it. Okay. Can I continue, please? Shall uh -huh. we continue? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, sister. Okay. So that is that is the pubic. Procedures. Now let's see the ileo procedures. Yes, sister. The ileo procedures. The ileo procedures muscle originates from the the fascia. There's a white line of fascia in the ileum. There's a white line of fascia in the ileum. That is where the the ileo procedures muscle originate from. It also covers the obturator internus muscles, which is marked by that uh, white thick line. And that is what we call the white line of fascia. That's what we call the white line of fascia. So anytime you pick the pelvis around the point where we mentioned the iliopectinian line, if you remember, iliopectinian line, line behind the iliopectinian eminence, that is where the white line of fascia is also marked. And that is exactly where the ilio procedures muscle originates from. As for the pelvic floor muscles, when we are describing them as a midwife, we are interested in knowing where the muscle originates from and where it is insected. That is the most important. If you know it, then you can describe all the muscles. Always keep in mind, where is it coming from and where is it going? That is the most important thing. Origination in section. So I'm saying that the iliocosidious muscle originates from the white line of fascia, pelvic fascia, and then it passes downwards and inwards, again in section, into the coccyx. That is the iliocosidious muscles. Any question? Any question? I over. I should go over, okay. I'm talking about the iliocosidious muscle. It's one of the muscles of the deep pelvic floor muscle. And I'm saying that it originated from the white line of fascia in the ilium, as the name implies, ilio, iliocosidious. So from the white line of fascia, that's where the muscles will originate from. Then it will pass inwards. It's like coming inside. Sabra, sabra. It passed inwards, then downwards, and gain insertion into the, the ana cosigia raffi or the ino cosigia raffi that I, I mentioned, or the coccyx, the tip of the coccyx. It will then be inserted there. It will downwards and inwards. The back was and gain insertion into the coccyx. And then the endo procedure body. So that is all that I'm talking about. Sorry. The ilia procedures. Ilia procedures. Any question? Sorry. Once you know where it's coming from and where it is infected, you are <laughs> sorry, you are done with the description. Can I move on to the issue procedure? Sorry. Unless somebody has a question for me. Uh, I heard something like um it covers the obturator internal muscles. Oh, I don't think I heard wrong. Yeah, oh, I said it. I said it originates from the fascia, the peri fascia. 
covering of Twitter internal muscles. It covers the of Twitter internal muscles. Okay, thank you. Mariana, Samoa, mute your mic. Mariana, I this thing because I cannot be teaching and I don't have control over the class. No, that one cannot be possible. If they have given me the idea that I, I should be able to take over. Rita, P, I can see your hand up. Why may I help you? Rita, P. Your hand is up, or it's a long while. It's a, it's a long yeah, while. It's a long while. Uh, okay, previous one that you okay. raised your hand. Okay. So I'm saying that, please, can I move on? Now, you said you wanted clarification of the obturator internal muscle. I said the iliocosidious muscle originates from the fascia. The fascia that is covering the obturator internal muscle. And I said it is marked by pelvic fascia, white line of pelvic fascia, white line of pelvic fascia. That is where the muscles are originating from. Then it passes inwards and backwards and downwards and gain insertion into the coccyx. Please, that's what I said. Is it clear? Is it clear? Can I continue? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Then let's talk about the ischio procedures. The ischial procedures. Please, when it is time, you tell me so that I can start with the labor. Okay. The ischial procedures. In fact, some books are talking about ischial procedures as a separate muscle. Meanwhile, it forms part of the levator and muscle. But some of the books are referring to it as a separate muscle, the ischial procedures. Okay. The, these procedural muscles, each is situated in front of the sacrospinous ligament. I'm saying that the ischiocosidial muscle is situated or can be found in front of the sacrospinous ligament. You know, there's a ligament that supports the pelvis, sacrospinous, as the name imp implies. The sacrospinous ligament is from the sacrum. Passes transversely and then gain into the gain in section into the spines of the ischium. Hence the name sacrospinous ligament. And that is where this ischiocosidia muscle originates from. Remember, the spines are attached to the ischium. And so the muscles are originating from the ischium, but then at the spines of the ischium. I hope it's clear. I've taken my time to explain it so we know where it is originating from. Adria. Now, so please, can I say it's orgi uh, originated from the ischial spine? So that is the ischial procedure. I say it originates from the spines ischial of the spine. ischium. Okay. Then it passes downwards. It passes downwards and inward to be inserted into the coccyx and then the lower part of the sacrum. I'm going over it. The ischial coccygeus muscles, I'm saying it originates from the ischial spines. Then it will pass downwards and then go inward to be inserted into the coccyx and then the lower part of the sacrum. That is the ischial coccygeus. Please take note that, that it is situated in front of the sacrospinous ligament. I said the sacrospinous ligament, I already explained that the sacrospinous ligament originates from the sacrum. Then it yes. passes transversely to gain insertion into the spines of the ischium, right? And I'm saying that the ischial the ischio procedure muscle originates from where that sacrospinous ligament insected at the uh, ischial spines. That is where the ischial procedures muscle is originating from. So once it originates from, from there, then it will pass downwards and then go inwards. And then it will be inserted into the lower part of the sacrum and then the upper part of the coccyx. But greater part is inserted into the coccyx. 
Hence the name ischiocosigial muscles or ischiocosigios. Please do you understand it now? Hello. Yes, Hello. Yes, sister. Uh, yes. Do you understand it now? Yes, Can I continue? Yes, sister. Okay. Yes, sister. Let's go. So that is it. And I'm saying that, please, I want you to note that the insertion of these three pairs of muscles help to form the part of the perineal body. The insertion of these three pairs of muscles help to form the upper part of the perineal body. So that when we, we start talking about the perineal body, then you know the type of muscles that constitutes the formation of the perineal body. Okay. So that when you are giving an episiotomy and you're not careful, you don't give it away, or when you are suturing and you don't suture it in alignment, in proper alignment, you can imagine what will happen. The whole thing will overlap and the patient ends up with severe dyspareunia. The patient will then end up with severe dyspareunia. Okay. I think we know dyspareunia. Painful sexual intercourse. And this no, is no. Okay. Thank you, sir. Oh. Please, any question? Dima, Dima. Please, do you have any question? Nah, to ask him. Thank you, sir. Gentleman. Where is he? Tanko. Sela Tanko, are you the one making noise? Okay, please, shall we move on? Unless you have a question for clarity. Other than that, we'll move on to the perineum and then we are done. Sister. Yes, madam. Please, can you give us uh, functions of each of the... Uh, the types of the deep pelvic floor muscles. The functions. Yeah, for the iliocoxygeus, ischio, and you gave for the pubococcygeus. So please, can you give for the iliocoxygeus? Um, Thank you. Okay. Okay. You want the functions of the pelvic floor muscles, okay? Okay. We didn't talk about it here. But I mentioned that uh, the, irreg the irregular shaped outlet of the pelvis is filled with the muscles, the fascia and soft tissues, probably known as the periform muscles. Okay. Then the functions are that the periform muscles receive the contents of the abdomen and the pelvis. Thanks for reminding me. It's true. I didn't give it to you. Please, I'm saying that the pelvic floor muscles receive the content of the abdomen and then the pelvis. The organs that are situated in the pelvis include the vagina, the rectum, the bladder, the urethra. They are all situated within this uh, pelvic floor muscles. And then also the fallopian tubes and then the ovaries are all within these muscles. They are situated in the pelvic cavity, of course. But then because the cavity is filled with these muscles, all these structures can be seen there. So it's like it helps to protect and then allow the contents of either the vagina either the vagina, the rectum, and all the openings, it is the peripheral muscles that allow their products or their content to come out, including the baby. It is the peripheral muscles that helps the baby to be born or to come out. Okay. So that, that is it. Then another function of the peripheral muscle is that Uh, it also helps in the opening of the vaginal orifice and then the opening of the vulva. 
And then posteriorly, the anus is also there. And they all pierce through these pelvic floor muscles. It allows for the passage of the, 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 the rectal content through the anus to come out. The, the bladder and its content being the urine to come out. And of course, the product of the, the uterus and then the vagina, it, is, it also helps us to come out. They also have to support the pelvic fascia. There are other structures that also help to support the pelvic floor muscles, and that is fat connective tissue or loose connective tissue. They all help to supporting this pelvic floor muscles. Actually, it's not a function per se, but because they are helping in supporting the structures, we have to mention that. And another function is that it helps to control. It also helps to control all the contents, contents through the both canals, all the canals that pierces through. It is the pelvic floor muscles that helps to control their passage. I'm talking about what is coming from the rectum, what is coming from the vagina. It is the pelvic floor muscles that helps to control what is coming from all these places. So that if you are in the public, you want to pass gas or you want to pass fletters. It is not acceptable to be in the bus and then we are doing that. Hmm? It's not advisable. It's not acceptable. So it is this pelvic floor muscle that will help you to control the gas so that at an appropriate place, the matter push, matter tape, push, all will come out. It is by the help of the pelvic floor muscles. Okay. Any question? Please, I've given you the functions. Thank you. <clears throat> Salome. Please, do you have any question? The one who was asking yeah, about yeah. the function, that is the function. Yes, Salome. Listen. Don't me. The Thank you. Uh, after this um, slide. So please, so most the... welcome. Again, okay. again, after delivery. With the elementary unit the and then the sample you were talking about. Advices, uh, on exercises mm -hmm. of the pelvic floor muscles. Um, it you you the muscles said with the elementary unit, it makes the, the individuals within the sample. Within the pelvis. Mm -hmm. It is right. by the help of the so pelvic floor muscles that in, indirectly with the soup example, we we can we turn the, the ingredients used to be an elementary, elementary sample? Exactly. Elementary exactly. unit. Let's say, okay. let's say, yeah, exactly. Any question in general, please. Be careful. Be careful. You can, you can use, up. you can Mere use, Adakwa. as you said, yeah, yes, yes, exactly, yes. let's assume that Mere, Mere, your, your, your tomato, yes, oh, no, it's your yes. fish, okay, whatever, yes. they are elementary. I want to ask right? if an age determines the, how stronger point. your muscles but, will be. Are you getting my point? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, so can those in also there help are the elementary units, uh, the ingredients, whatever. You can term them as elementary units. Will be. And then because you can see that aging, okay, elementary units are out, also come and break and then form the sample. The sphincter, form the sample. The yes. sphincter, the anal sphincter that we much. talked about, Thank are also much. becoming weak. But then if you don't keep on doing the casual okay, exercise, so now let's, let's then at a point in time, it becomes so loose this, uh, that that's why in some, that, yeah, in some uh, time is almost up. Uh, women, you realize so the last that point sometimes you hear is, to us, she, she's yeah. not aware of. You, you hear them yeah. saying yeah. that yeah. yeah. the yeah. muscles yeah. are becoming yeah. flaccid. So when you hear that okay. it's just yeah. so a, a process of making to come out with ease. A conclusion. So, so, so uh, uh, aging is basis a of the, the sample that aging you get from the population. Aging is a factor it's like you generalize, you just generalize the woman's whatever that you found ah. based on the sample. It can the even happen that you men, from in, the, in men too, um, it sample, happen. You are able to generalize for the whole population. Okay? So that is it. That is it. So that, that's, that's, that's what we refer to as statistical kind of inference. But oh, as, as I said, it all boils down to inferential statistics. You know, when when you are at your free time, just check the meaning of inference. Check the meaning of description. Uh, I mean, finite. In, some of these things, I will advise you that, you see, whenever you are studying these things, just look out for the definition of the term. And now you relate it to whatever you are doing, not only statistics. For example, in your nursing Hello. or whatever. If there's something that's 
Hello. 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 Getting the point. Hello, sister. Just search the word itself. Yeah. After yeah. that, you get what. Yeah, please. We are done with the problem. Not related to whatever Moses. you are dealing with. And so, uh, it was. Is there any points that I, somebody? That's how I learn. Yes. Whenever I'm, I'm learning, I come up with something that I just look out for the the layman. The oh, sister. Hello, is there anybody? This scenario. What does? Hello, this dear. Hello. After that, I bring it to my Hello. statistics. Hello, please. I, I can I, hear. Oh, you. Yeah. sister, please. Can you go say. over the importance of the so you can also as well. Apply it. This, my network was chat, okay. On and off, so I couldn't hear. Okay, so okay, um, then, our time then, is shall we brainstorm? Let's brainstorm and, and class, let me know whether others God also willing, heard those who heard me. We'll meet okay. next week. Can, 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 can we brainstorm? Okay. Please. So, just take one care of function yourself. of the parents. Any questions? Of if you have any questions. Because I kept yeah. Yeah. Please, we will be happy yeah. if you yeah. send us yeah. the, the, yeah. yeah. the slide. Yeah. The yeah. Yeah. The yeah. The content of the abdomen and okay. the pelvis. Example, okay. the yeah. vagina, the uterus. I don't the want you to be happy, so I'm not saying it immediately. In the, please, in the video you talked about and it also helps um, the content of the pelvis to okay any other out. any other any other that is uh, is, the future, are you guys the okay if there's no question oh there's a hand mm -hmm. up here good good someone the content of the serial I wanted to find out the can an error in uh, collecting data affect the population yeah. size? It helps the sample size. empty its contents. Which, that is uh, yeah, a lot of error. You have sampling <laughs> error. You have, uh, and helps to control the content of the error margin. Uh, both canals. A lot of the vagina and so, um, very good. At times you predefine your error and it good. really affects the. What else did we see? Sample size. You you appreciate when we start computing the sample size. We said you what? The error or and you will see that as the error decreases, good. the mark will be the sample size increasing. And then uh, as the error increases, the sample size. Hello. Another major function that we didn't mention, mention is the the whole class. control all the contents of all the. Okay. I hope it's okay. Another major function that we didn't mention, with respect to the very floor muscle, is that. It is in sexual intercourse. The pelvic floor muscle. Please, all of you pay For example, for the sample, pay attention that's the reason why one. you guys, when we come to the hospital, we are saying you tell us to go for a blood it sample. It is in sexual intercourse. Yeah. Yeah. Especially part the pelvic floor procedures. And then you it to helps to control. When we are having, uh, we are, we are having sexual yeah, that's what intercourse or we are, are engaged in uh, sex, yeah. so what yeah, happens okay. is that basically that's what the pelvic procedures muscle that will help to control Maturation. Take note of that. Okay, there was a hand. It will have to control maturation, so that in the course of uh, the woman oh, reaching orgasm or okay, the right? man reaching orgasm, yeah, yes, we okay. have to contract okay, and so control maturation. Other than that, one thing would have been the outcome. Now, I want the answer from you. One thing thing would have been the outcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Have a good day. Have a good day. Whatever content is coming out. Everything is coming out. What do you think would have happened in the course of having sex? Okay, so take care of yourself. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye. Exactly. Like before you finish, the whole bed is wet. Why? Because you have urinated in addition of reaching orgasm. Hey, that would be serious. You see, but <laughs> it is the perfect floor muscle. Yes, yeah, that would be a disaster. <laughs> Especially if it is the first time you are going to that man's room. Hey, don't call you again. <laughs> you come and you on my bed. Do you know that your perfect floor muscle? That's happened. Some people you need them. Hey. Uh, they, they should try to such a person that when she complains to you, teach her how to do the casual exercise. Whether she yeah. is in for sex or not, she should be doing the casual exercise to help to strengthen the muscles very well. So that you don't urinate at the same time when you are uh, you are to uh, you know discharge or uh, yeah. ejaculate. Sometimes you know. sometimes what? Hadja, it's not. Hadja, um, Hadja, it it isn't a uh, unique question. It's, they call it question. So, uh, 
It's not you hating it. It's what <laughs> but some people go through oh. that. I it's what? It's urine and the name is sweating. It's uh-huh. the name it was. The name, the name is sweating. Sweating. Yes, please. I see. Sweating. So such a person, eh, when she is able to confide in you, just teach the person to do how to do the uh, the perfect what do you call it? Kegel. Kegel, yes. Kegel exercise. You have to teach her how to do the Kegel exercise when she's alone, when she's there. After all, the Kegel exercise is the only exercise that you do and nobody sees it. And it is done anywhere at any time. You can do it at any time, at any point without anybody. Seeing. You can be doing your Kegel exercise and nobody can see you doing it. Even if you're holding your phone, do it. Please, come on, do it. Do the Kegel exercise so that you can teach others. So that you can also it's teach your Kachum. clients. Kachum, that is it. Kachum, the Jamie. Kachum, want to go. Everybody, do it. Kachum, hey, you Kachum. Now, Jamie, do it. Do it. <coughs> so that if you know how to do it well, you can teach mothers also. The, the to do males it are also not well. among the... The males, they should cheat their wives and their girlfriend. They can also do it. They have very four muscles. So they, they can do it. Gentlemen, my brother, uh, my male midwives, I, I always like them. Do it. Do it and so that you can teach your girlfriends and your wives to be doing it. It's the only exercise that you do and nobody sees it. <laughs> nobody sees it. You can do it when you are in the car, you are sitting, sleeping, anywhere. You can do it. It will have to strengthen the muscles, especially the people cosidious muscles. So that during sexual intercourse, you don't mess up the bed. You finish that and you have to go and watch bed sheet. It's not good. So, so learn it yourself. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. On this okay. So on this okay. note, when it is time for labor, you are you, you prompt me, eh? And then we'll start the labor. Yes, please. please. Can Please. you say the Hello. pelvic affords protection to the pelvic organ? You said... I said, can you add it to a function that the pelvic affords protection to the pelvic organ? We said it when we were talking off. about the pelvis. This okay. one is the pelvic floor muscles. Pelvic the one floor that we do them there. But during the description of the pelvis, when we were talking about the, uh, the pelvis. I said it, that it protects the organs that are situated within it. If you remember, when we were talking about the functions of the pelvis, we said it yeah. aids in walking, it receives the weight of the body, coordinates yeah. such weight and transmits it to the leg. I think we said it all. Yeah. But we are talking about the functions of the pelvic floor muscles. Oh, That's okay. why we cannot see the function of the pelvic itself here. All right. But and at you. least it's a reminder. Mm. So Hello, sister. Okay. Hello, sister. Go ahead. Please. Yes, when, dear. When you are describing the pubococcygeus muscles, you said as uh-huh. it moves back, it forms three distinct bands. But I didn't get where yes. the bands. No, I want you to go over. The uh-huh. three bands. Oh, I said at the three distinct band. I said that uh, the yeah. pubococcygeus muscles being in the most important muscles of the deep pelvic floor muscles. I yeah. said they originate from the posterior wall of the pelvis, uh, okay. of the pubic bone. Yeah. Then it, it moves backwards, right? Yeah. Now, as it is moving backwards, yeah. then three distinct band, a band, B-A-N-D, three yeah. distinct band are formed. I said the lateral bands, that okay. is one on the right, one on the the lateral bands move down to the wall, right? Then the central band, I said the central band, mm-hmm. will then move backwards. Then it will encircle the vagina orifice. Then it first it will encircle the urethra orifice before encircling the vagina orifice. Then it will join the other two lateral bands. Before it then gain in section 
into the courses. That's what I said. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Is it clear now? Yes, please. Is it? Okay, that's fine. Okay. So on this note, uh, the time, I wasn't watching the time, but if it is not time for labor, eh, then let's uh, move on to the vagina. We are done with the vulva. We have, have finished with the description of the vulva, if you remember. Or it's not your group. It's, it's your group. Or, and I even sang... Oh, it's your group, and I even sang yeah. the vulva song for you. Yes, I mm. Yes, vagina. So let's move on. We haven't described vagina. So the one singing the vagina, vagina should keep quiet. What about the perineal body? We didn't talk about perineal body. We didn't do the perineal body. Yes, yes. And somebody should describe the perineal okay, body. Such as the pelvic song. Oh, the pelvic song I will teach you later. But they are saying we haven't done the perineal body, so let's talk about the perineal body. It's very important. So the perineal body, please. Somebody should describe the perineal body. Uh, uh, Mary Adapa, uh, uh, your name keep on coming up, Mary. Maria Dakwa. Describe the perineal body, please. If not the body, the, the perineum itself. Talk about the perineum itself. Mention the perineum itself because it may be free. Women's perineum is so dear to us. We don't want to mishandle mm -hmm. it. Those of us who have been supporting people's perineum and causing bruises there, we don't want to handle the perineum. We we'll allow it to stretch. So, so talk about, Adapa, talk about the perineum itself. The body, somebody else will, uh, will talk about it. Hopefully I will talk about it. Yes, somebody signed this up. Uh, Shahadu. Shahadu Mariam. Adia. Ah, good. What I remember about Wonderful. the perineal body is that. Eh? Thank you very much. Someone has put the picture. There's a diagram. So beautiful. It lies okay. in between the vagina and the rectum. And it Thank is triangular in shape. Yeah. And it, it measures approximately 3.5 centimeters in length. Uh -huh. Yes, I think that's what I can remember. Please, can you raise your voice a little bit for us? I said, uh, what I remember uh -huh. about the perineal body is that uh, it lies in between the vagina and the rectum. And it is it lies in between the vagina, vagina orifice and, and, the, and the rectum. Anus. Okay. And the rectal canal. Okay. And it is triangular in shape. Good. And each triangle measures approximately 3.5 centimeters. That's mm -hmm. what I can remember from God. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Who is speaking? <laughs> it's Shahadu Who are Mariam. You? Aja, you admitted ah. me to the school and you taught me oh, okay. this. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, so the perineum. Uh, once again, somebody should talk about the perineum and let's continue with the perineal body. Hello, sister. The per yes, madam. Okay, the perineum is the skin that uh, covers between the genitalia and the anus. That's what I can say. Hey. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Hello, sister. Hello. Okay, I said the perineum Hello, is the, I said the perineum mm -hmm. is the skin that covers between the, the uh, genitalia and the anus. In the anus, okay. So it's that, that triangular shaped area. Good. Okay, let's quickly go through it. So the perineum, in fact, uh, it is the region of the body of the uh, the superficial aspects. 
So the, the more between the, as you said, that can be found triangular shape area, a triangular shape area. The perineum, the perineum is the triangular shape area that can be found, like she said, that can be found or situated between the vagina orifice and then the ana orifice. That is the perineum. It is covered with skin and hair grow on it at puberty. In fact, it is a, a, a diamond shaped area and it is best visualized uh, with the patient consent. Anytime that you want to visualize or expose somebody's perineum, there's a need for you to ask her consent first. I like this diagram, it's very good. So you have to let the individual be aware before you make an attempt to expose her perineum. Is very important, very important. Theoretically, um, there's a line that drawn that is drawn transversely between the ischia to borosities, and that forms the anterior urogenital and posterior anal triangle. I just give you a picture how you can depict the 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 perineum, right? Okay, so that is the. The, the perineum. Picture is a triangular shaped area. Yes. Hey, hey, please, can you yes. go back? Oh, okay. As for the perineum, that way we can even see it with uh, this new, our naked eye. But uh, I'm only giving you a picture how it can be identified. I said a triangular shaped area. That can be found. You know, every triangle has a base and an apex. But this very one, the apex points upwards, then the base is down. I said it is covered with skin. The area that is covered with skin and <coughs> so hair develop on it at puberty. That is what I said. And I said that the perineum can be subdivided by a theoretical line that is drawn transversely. The line is drawn transversely between the ischia tuberosities. This split forms the anterior urogenital and posterior anal triangle. These triangles are associated with what we are talking about. It has, okay. The network is breaking. Okay, so we have the half of the perineum. I said the anal triangle, it is the posterior, the anal. I think it's from her side. Please can you hear me? Please can you hear me? 
No, I don't know. 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 I the network is breaking. Sometimes we hear, sometimes we don't. We don't hear. Oh, so you can't hear me. Hadja, now we can hear you. We can hear you, Hadja. Okay. Hello. 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 And the other triangle is uh, the lower part that you can see here. Description of the perineum. Description of the perineum is what I'm describing. Uh, start I should start again. No, yeah. you live and go and have your conversation. Then you come back. You come back and say, I should start a fresh. No, 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 this time we were not hearing anything. Yeah, please. Just okay. Anything. Okay, then I'm starting all over. Sorry. I'm starting Thank all you. over. I'm talking about the perineum. I said is a triangular shaped area that is found between the ana orifice and the vagina orifice. Being a triangle, I said the apex points upwards and the base points downwards. And then I said that uh, uh, there's a split that forms the anterior urogenital and posterior anal triangle. And I said these triangles are associated with different components of the perineum. Then I said Anna triangle, and that's what I'm coming to describe. The Anna triangle is the posterior half of the perineum. It is bounded by the coccyx, the sacrotuberous ligaments, and then a theoretical line between the ischia tuberosity. So that forms the Anna triangle. The main contents of the anal triangle are the main content of the anal triangle are the anal aperture, that's the opening of the anus. The anal aperture, A P E L T U R E, the anal aperture, that is the opening of the anus. <laughs> then we have the external anal sphincter muscle. External anal sphincter muscle. They are voluntary muscles that are responsible for opening and closing the anus. The external anal sphincter, we had already spoken about it. And that's where we even cited the example that if you want to pass letters and you are in the public, you are in the office of the president, is that where you are going to pass your, your letters? No. So the external anal sphincter will help you to control, constrict the anal sphincter so that you don't pass unnecessary gas to disturb anybody's uh, air. So that is it. Then we have the ischio anal fossa. Ischio anal fossa. That is the spaces located laterally to the anus. The ischio anal fossa. It is the spaces that is located laterally to the anus. Okay. Then the anal aperture is located centrally in the triangle with the ischial anal fossa either on either side. Please, I'm taking it again. I'm saying that I'm talking about the ischial anal fossa, then the anal aperture. And I said the anal aperture is located centrally centrally in the triangle with the ischio anal fossa on either side. <laughs> this fossa contain fats and connective tissue. This fossa contain fats and connective tissue, which allow for function of the anal canal during defecation. 
You see, uh, sometimes when you are to pass, when you want to go to the washroom, you want to pass toilet, you want to pass freezes. If you had constipated, what do you think happen will happen? Sometimes you have constipated for two days. They bring me the bathroom bucket and you what pull happens? Back. You see that the physics. So I'm saying that it will help in the expansion of the rectum or the anal sphincter so that so that if you had uh, constipated for too long, what happens is that you need to force this feces out. By so doing, it is this sphincter that will help to expand to allow the feces. You see, you strain, and sometimes if you are not careful, uh, tears will even be coming from your eyes, all because of constipation. And this type of feces, <laughs> when it drops into the WC, you flush it and it wouldn't go so stubborn. It was stubborn coming out and stubborn going from the WC. <laughs> all this, yes. <laughs> all these things are happening because maybe you refuse to attend nature's call. And then at the end of the day, it has to come out. We are saying that the Anna Apeta, that is the opening of the anus, that helped this kind of stubborn physics to come out. So that is one function of it. Now let's talk about the urogenital triangle. Urogenital triangle in the perineum. The urogenital triangle. Please, it's time, time. Yes. It's time for them. Yes. It's time. Okay. It's time. Do we continue straight away? Do we continue straight away? Yes, Hadja. Okay, because no, uh, my worry is that... 15 minutes no. break. No. It's 15 minutes break. Let's okay. 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 Then we come back. Okay. Okay. So, so, so then what's the time now? Break. It's now nine. Okay, it's now nine. Five. Nine, nine, five. Nine, five. Nine, five. Nine, five. So when are we coming back? Okay, you are now uh, 541. And I yeah. expect to see more than it's that. Fourth, because we, we yes, have reached, yes. Yes. We yes, have reached a very point of labor. So please come back. Come back and let's continue. I beg you. Okay. So please go and come back. Hello, Adia. Have the two You didn't get him. So please, no, I I was I was the, the 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 Adia, please, last week we called him. Please, we didn't get him. Uh, that one, I, uh, I told Mr. Yusuf. You know that one, I went to the studio to do the, the teaching, the lecturing. <laughs> It was at the, at the studio. The, so please, it's not oh. on my phone here. I would have forwarded mm -hmm. it to you, but do remind me tomorrow so that I'll tell Mr. Yusuf to forward. Because when I mentioned it to him, he said uh, they have already given it out to you. So please do remind me so that I'll go to you mm -hmm. for it for you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So please go for a break and then come back at night. Mm, for uh, yeah. Yes, please. Please. Hey, that is that hello. Is are we getting the same link or we are getting link by link? Yeah, no, by uh, the other time, I, 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 I disconnected and when I was coming back, after that, that and I couldn't join. You don't uh, need to disconnect. Just leave it on. She will continue. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. continue. Don't leave it. I, I'm, I'm continuing with it. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay, then thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, well, thank, thank you, Asia. 
That's one of my gentlemen. I'm happy to hear his voice. Good. <laughs> I like the male midwives. <laughs> Okay, so you go and come. I'm waiting for you. <laughs>